Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at Cardano and decide whether the top is in. At least for now, we're going to look at Cardano USD, Cardano BTC, and a few other of the pairing charts. So make sure you hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon so you can be updated with the time sensitive content. We've also got a staking pool for Cardano. Check out the details in the description down below. Let's dive in. Market cap update, Cardano 66 billion. Pretty much one of the major top 10 cryptos to be going up while Bitcoin has been dropping. So that's going to play into what we're looking at in the charts as well. Uh, we've got Ethereum at 392 billion. So we are closing in on that gap as well at the moment. And of course, Bitcoin is well and truly under the trillion dollar market cap. We're just holding above 2 trillion total at the moment. So that might be another little psychological level as well. All right, over to the charts. And the first one I have to look at is Cardano BTC. We're looking at this because we have gone on a significant run over the last couple of weeks. We have broken through these highs, which we've talked about on the channel. Uh, this was a nice accumulation zone and the breakout of around 25, 2600 Satoshis was the first sign. There were others through here, but I like to take momentum trades and just on uh, enter on breakouts. The next one was as we broke through the recent high, which was at 3200. So you could see the market just holding up underneath the 3200 and the lows were getting higher. The highs remain the same. It breaks out on high volume textbook. Wyckoff theory, we've got accumulation and then the breakout. Now we are seeing another resistance zone of 5,000 thereabouts. The previous top was at 5,200. Oh, we got, a, we got a zone of around 5,200. The previous top, I should say, is at around 8,800. So I'm using this zone here because there were a lot of lows for support. And generally, like we've seen in the past, support becomes resistance. Hopefully we can flip that uh, support, that resistance into support. And that's what we're going for here with Cardano. So keep an eye on that. If you have your charts open, hit some alerts. If you're using Blockfolio, link to that is in the description down below as well. You can just set yourself uh, some alerts in the app. So you can just go here, 5200. We'll keep that in mind as we continue to move up. But we're looking at a potential top here. So I'm going to look at that on the USD chart. So... What I've got here is I'm looking at the Binance exchange. So this is all the data from Binance. This is the stuff that we've been tracking for months now. We're looking at timeframes to give us an idea of how long these moves might last for. So we have identified around four to five months is a decent move on Cardano. Right now, we haven't even seen one month from the low here that we hit on the 23rd of April. And I'm looking at a top, at least an intermediate top. We have a few signs to show us that this could be an intermediate top. Just like I talked about on the 27th of February when I put a video out, check it out on the channel, selling some Cardano there. What happened after the 27th of February? We went sideways for about two and a bit months. So that was a pretty good call back here. And I'm doing the same sort of thing here, except we are a lot shorter in time on this move. So the reason for this is we have a FIB level that we're hitting again. You know, we look at 50% and of course, 100% moves. This one is from the major low that happened in March, 2020. So what we're using is this tool up here, trend-based FIB extension from the low, anchor it to the low, to the recent top. And I understand that there was a top that went higher. You could use that as well. It's not really gonna make that much of a difference because it's only a matter of cents. Um, so using this one here is a dollar fifty-seven, or the previous top is dollar fifty-five. Anchor the next point, so that's our point B. Our point C is to the low here of eighty-nine cents. The market has run this exact move from the low to the top. So this low is at about two and a half. Uh, sorry, yeah, one point seven cents. Call it two cents for a round number. Again, the top was one dollar fifty-five. So a dollar fifty-three move minus the low from the top. Okay, so the, the move is $1.53 and what we have just seen is approximately about $1.60 move. So the low is at 89 cents, call it 90 cents. We hit a dollar, uh, sorry, $2.50. So that's a $1.60 move. We've just run 100%, the exact amount minus a few cents. What's a, 
what's a few cents when we're looking at this on the charts? It's only a few cents. It doesn't matter. We need a guide. That's what the whole purpose of this is. Uh, I was going to say what's a few cents between friends, but then it will sound like I'm, I'm copying another YouTube right here, which I also enjoy watching. Looking at this, we have the, the top 100%. We ran this in many, many weeks. Check this out. That is 50 weeks. Call it a, month, uh, a year, not a month. One year. Now, the same move in a price range. We just ran that in three weeks. This is a weekly chart. So what took us 50 weeks has just taken us three weeks. I suspect we might need a little bit of time to rest and recover here. If we don't, then the next move up is to this level of $3, which is our 125% and 200%. I'll get that a little bit closer so we can see it. Remember, this was our first target, $2.50 for specific reasons of it being uh, 161% of the entire range. So we're using this major range here, and then we projected the FIB level above to around that 161, so that's what we had, $2.50. And then our next level was $3. So this low wasn't in when we first had this range, and then when the low came in, it gave us an opportunity to measure the entire range, low, high to low, and give us another target. And so we had a price cluster coming in. Price clusters are very strong to uh, resist a market. It's not gonna resist it forever. Uh, it can in some cases, but in this case, I think it's gonna be temporary. And maybe we sit at these levels just to recover, build some more energy at these you know, $1.80 to 240 ish levels, build some more energy in the market, and then we can start to move again. Now, while we're on this chart, the next levels that I was looking at was around that $3 level. And we have with the fibs, we have it at $2.80 and $3.20. So right in the middle is three bucks. And that gives us our 200% of this major range from the lows in December to the major highs in February and April. So this exact range doubling again. So there's a price cluster at around three bucks. And looking at the fib, sometimes these major levels will extend. So the idea here is we want it to extend. So we've got this one range. And if we get an extension, that's a bullish uh, there's a, a bullish key level that we've got a good sign of strength in the market. It doesn't mean we're going to continue going to $5 straight away. We might have to have a little bit of a pullback, test the levels again, recover, build some more energy, and then push up again. So the reasons that I'm looking at here for a potential top being in, just to uh, summarize those, is we have a price cluster. We've seen the market run the exact amount that it's taken 50 weeks for in just three weeks. So I think we've had a lot of energy thrown into the market very, very quickly. One, two, three weeks into that top. And so that brings us together with our price and our time just hitting it really, really quick. Now, there's one other thing that I want to bring up here that we haven't looked at before in the charts, and that is about sections of a market. And this is another piece of GAN theory. It's a little bit more advanced, so don't try and use this every which way you can see it. But in terms of uh, sections, we can see three clear sections happening now. And so that's what I'm saying a top may be in, and it's probably getting a little bit, the risk is getting out of control in terms of what the reward could be. You know from watching the channel that we looked at an entry at $1.60 because we've broken to new all-time highs. So the risk is lower, but the reward is still up there. Uh, we had a couple of other entries when we were looking at other breakouts in other markets. It's the same sort of setup is what I'm looking at here. But now we're getting later into this fifth section. So the section one is our first move out of the low, then a pullback, so a correction. Section three we've just seen, and these could be either here or here. It doesn't really matter. Same deal with this one. It's only a couple of cents difference. And I would say this is the major top because the market really didn't close above it. We had a correction and then another move. So this is section three. Section four is a correction. And now we're into section five. And we've just seen section five move the same price range as both section one and uh, section three. So basically from the bottom of section one to the top of section three, because there's a little bit of a gap here. So that is another reason why I think we're getting close to a top. If not, we've already seen a top. And because Bitcoin is also having a hard time going anywhere. Another Wyckoff theory uh, look at this analysis, which is how we called the first crash on April 18th breakdown. That was GAN. And then Wyckoff theory was that we weren't getting the volume pickup 
as we were starting to move higher and we didn't break our 60,500. But I'll do another video on Bitcoin. The point here is that if uh, Bitcoin happens to continue moving down, then that's going to struggle or ADA is going to struggle on its US dollar value, but it may hold its BTC value. So, you know, these are pretty important levels here. The piece we've got to get through is the 5200 level. So we are hitting resistance. And that's pretty much what I wanted to mention in this video here. In terms of taking new positions on ADA, this wouldn't be in my plan to be taking new positions. Now, my new positions are when we start to break through these highs, which we talked about many times. So there's a, we want to get an entry signal. Entry signal was break of the highs after some consolidation. And then the next break is as we broke the highs. So that's another entry signal. I don't see an entry signal here. And in terms of a breakdown, I don't see that either, but I could anticipate that we just go sideways in this region. So if you're not willing to stomach anywhere from currently where we've dropped at 8% down to these old highs to test those levels of 35%, then you might have to reconsider your plan. But in terms of my own trade, I am happy with these levels here, potentially moving some profits of ADA into something else, which I see being a, uh, a better option, potentially Bitcoin, because I could see this chart going down a little bit from here. Uh, the only thing that would flip me to say remain in ADA is if we get a break of these highs. So that's the, that's the bullish signal here. We get the break from these previous supports, which is now resistance then that's a bullish sign. But right now we could just be holding up. This could be a temporary top on ADA. Essentially, the point here is don't freak out if we get a pullback on ADA. We could move, even move down to these old highs here of around 20%. So that would be a 20% loss on Bitcoin value. But I suspect most people aren't really concerned about their Bitcoin value and they're just more concerned about their USD value. In terms of USD, then our level beneath us is somewhere around the dollar 70 mark at this point in time otherwise we'd come all the way back to that dollar 40 dollar 50 level so just keep that in mind if we happen to break down from that then the show is over for now that would be a very bearish sign for ada but i don't think that would happen i suspect something like another one two three move so we get a bit of a correction like that and then we start to build up again not exactly to scale but essentially something in that sort of range, you know, we come down, test it again, start to build back up, and then we go. That is if we don't happen to push further from here. But uh, for now, I'm happy to understand that there could be a top in ADA, or at least a potential sideways uh, reaccumulation zone in ADA. The idea to mention this to you guys is because we looked at breakouts. We looked at breakouts on ADA USD, breakouts on ADA BTC. We've called uh, good areas for getting out of the market, good areas for getting back in the market if you wanted to trade it. Otherwise, if you're hodling, no problems at all. Good areas to re-enter if you weren't in ADA at all, which were these breakdowns from the lows and then a quick push back above. So all of this is going really well. I feel like I'm following the ADA market uh, much better than other markets. And you know, while I'm on it, then I should keep trading something that is working very well for me. So Cardano looking pretty good. I'll leave this Cardano video almost here. I have a quick look at ETH before we wrap up. So we've had a nice big move out of that with some high volume. So that's looking good. Also ADA dot, it has hit some peaks, but maybe we're coming back a little bit just to retest these highs. ADA LTC, another push up. And you can see we've started to reverse on that because we're having a bit of a pullback on ADA at the moment. Nothing significant in, in my view. And then ADA Sol. You know, this is our other hedge, Solana. So we've pushed up. Maybe we come back a little bit from here, 10, 20%. But uh, yeah, we're going to keep a close eye on that because Solana could be doing much better than ADA in the coming weeks, months, because it's another hedge against the whole uh, smart contract ecosphere. And Cardano has shown a bit of volume pushing into this high. So if it doesn't get another push through, then that's probably a sign that we might see a bit of a, a drag down against Solana. So I'll leave you guys with that for Cardano. That's my update under, uh, to get a better idea of is this a top, what to look for, what we've looked for in terms of time and price. We've looked at Cardano against BTC and uh, USD, checked it out against other smart contract players in the space and of course Litecoin as well. And we're seeing that it is having a bit of a pullback at this point in time. Personally, nothing to worry about. It's just I don't see another re-entry position just yet unless we break some highs. Thanks once again, guys. You know where to follow me, YouTube, 
subscribe, like the video up if you found some value from it. Twitter for news updates. I'm over there a lot. If you don't have an account, be sure to set a Twitter uh, account up because there's a lot of good stuff over there that uh, myself and other people are sharing so you get an idea of the crypto space. Instagram for Q and A's on the daily. I'll be getting over there again, answering your questions. Then uh, that's pretty much it. Free newsletter, link to that is down below as well. So if you wanna learn about this, drop your email address, trading, investing, finance, cryptocurrency, everything you wanna know in those newsletters down below. You can start to get a feel for how the markets are working. I'll catch you guys at the next video. Stick around for that. Until then, have more fun to get more done.